Hello crypto fam thanks for tuning back to my channel recently there was a attack on binance bridge and the attacker stole around 2 million bnb tokens which equates to 566 million usd roughly this exploit has resulted from a bug in markle proof and so i thought i'll discuss what are markle trees and markle proofs and why they are used in blockchain now bitcoin also leverages markle tree and ethereum also uses a modified version called markle patricia tree We will also code out an example together where we will see how to use Markle proofs to verify whether a given wallet address is a part of NFT whitelist so that we allow only whitelisted addresses to mint. So grab a cup of coffee as we are getting started. Now first we will discuss what is Markle tree data structure and what problem it lets us solve. Now we will be taking the same example of NFT whitelist throughout this video to understand this concept. Now if you want to find out if an address is whitelisted address, we have to store all the whitelisted addresses on chain and it is going to cost us astronomically high amount of gas proportional to our data. Is there any way we can avoid storing all the whitelisted wallet addresses on chain and still have a way to verify whether the given address belongs to our whitelisted address? And Mark Entry comes to our rescue. Let's say A B C D E F G H are the hashes of our wallet addresses. Now, we again hash these first two hashes of wallet addresses and create another hash which will be one of the nodes in our markel tree similarly we'll take next two wallet addresses hashes and again hash it to create another node and this way we'll keep on repeatedly hashing all the hashes until we obtain the root of the tree and this root will actually be stored in our smart contract and let's see how we can verify whether a particular wallet address belongs to our whitelisted address list i'm opening another example where we can see clearly how it is efficient to use markel trees to verify whether something belongs to a group or not let's say we want to verify whether hk belongs to this list of items for that we will only need four hashes yes only four hashes what is its neighbor another one is its parents neighbor another one is their parents neighbor and another one will be the neighbor of their parent that is this all the elements marked blue are all the hashes that we will need to create a root and then we can actually check whether this root matches the root which is stored in our smart contract and this is how we use markel trees to very efficiently verify now one thing to note would be that it is a balanced binary tree each node has exactly two children and and if you have odd number of wallet addresses then you can just duplicate one item and then create markel tree now the complexity to create this markel path is order of log n since the height of this tree is order of log n or else you can say there are log n layers in this tree where n is the number of leaves or the number of items that you have in our case wallet addresses now the next question is how will we know what are it the neighbors and this exact nodes that we require this is what markel proof will help us generate so we can generate markel proof with the help of libraries and that proof will actually let us form all this so once we create the markel tree we will have all these hashes available to us at their specified positions and once we say that hk is present at this particular position in this list of items we can actually find out the next element in the list and different neighbors or you can also call siblings that we require now you might argue we already know the position of the element in the list we already know what the list is then it will only take us order of one to actually find out this element and that's correct but what we are concerned about here is the storage we cannot store all the elements on chain and still need a way to verify whether something belongs to a group there are definitely certain trades off that we take in order to do some cost optimization because it's not cost friendly to store all these data on blockchain now let us see this in action now we will move to markel tree js npm package and we'll use this library to actually generate markel tree and markel proof so i am going to quickly grab this example and now i'll open my editor and paste it and we have to install this library so i'll say npm i markel tree js and instead of using sha256 algorithm i'll be using kasak256 because this is the recommended one and this is also used in ethereum so we'll be using kasak256 package and let me install both with npm i I already have both installed so it might say that it's already there. Okay, done. Now let me replace it everywhere wherever I see sha256. 
Let me replace it with Kesak 256. Okay, great. Let me increase the font a little bit. Okay, now it's good. Hmm. Well, as you can see, let me remove this part as well. Not worried about it. And in this example, we can see there are three elements, A, B, C, and then they are mapped to their CASAC 256 values. That means we created a hash. We hashed all these three elements, and now we have the leaves. And then we are going to create a Markle tree using these leaves, and the hashing algorithm will be CASAC 256. Now we'll create a root out of this Markle tree with tree dot get root dot two string hex. And then let's say we are trying to find out whether A belongs to this tree. So we can hash it with Kesak 256 again. And this is the main part. We are trying to get a proof from the tree. And then to verify it, we just call tree dot verify pass the proof, the leaf that we want to verify and the Markle root. Okay. And I know it is too much. I'll be going over each thing slowly one by one where we will also log what is there in the proof. We will log the tree. But let me quickly run this and let's see what does it prints. You can see it prints true. It says that A is a part of this tree. What if I say D? Let's say what does it prints. It prints false. Okay, so clearly it looks like it works. Let me pass in another example. Looks like it works. Now let's see what is happening behind the scene. First, I want to do is I want to print this Merkle tree. Okay. This will give us a really nice visualization. As you can see on my screen, let me clear my screen and let me remove all other console logs so we see only one thing on screen. Okay, great. Okay, now you can see we got a Markle tree. You can see there is a hash on the parent level. Then there are two children with correspondingly these two hashes. And then for this hash, there are again two children with these two hashes. And for this one, we have only one children with this hash. Okay. Now, if I have to show you diagrammatically, let me show that to you as well. Go to auto draw and let's say this is element A and B and C. And these two are going to form a hash which will be A, A, B. So sorry for my handwriting. And then C is going to form. Usually when we have odd number of elements, we usually try to duplicate it and use the same element so that we always have even number of trees. Implementation can differ, but this is one way we tackle it. And this will be our root in this case. Okay. So let me mark all these with a text of their valids. So if I go here, this is going to be the root hash. Okay let me mark it great then these two are the children's so let me mark another text and let me use it here hmm. let me mark it here let me change the color to green good Okay, whatever I'm not able to change the color, we'll see. Next is I need one more text here. And that should be the hash of this node. I'll paste it and I'll make it a little bit smaller. Good. Not sure why is it small? What did I copy it? It would need it smaller. Okay. Good. Now we will also have hashes for A, B, C. So this is for A. I'll also try to hash it and show you what exactly it is. But for now, just bear with me. And I'm trying to tag the hashes of all the nodes with what we have obtained from our Markle tree. 
this is for B, this is for C. Okay, I'm going to add it here because it's already too congested here. Okay, great. We got the hash of all the elements in the tree. Now the next step is I'm going to show you actually to hash this A element and I'm going to show you it's going to match this. So let me do that quickly. Console.log gets a 256 of A. Let's see what does it gives us. Okay, you can see this is giving us a buffer value. So in order to change that, we'll do Markel tree dot buffer to hex. I guess it should be buffer to hex. And yes, let's see. Okay, there is some typo. Oh, you can see what did we get? 3AC. Just observe this string. 3AC double 2. If I try to search it in my terminal, it should match both of these. Okay. So that's how we form the leaves. And as you can see, we have hashed it multiple times to get this root. Now, this is the root that we need to add it to our smart contract, and that we will see in just a bit. Now I want you to all to focus on this proof part. Let me log what is proof and then we can actually play around with it. Let's just log proof and see what it is. And I'm going to remove all other console logs so we can just observe what is there in the proof. Okay. Okay. The proof is empty because I have created it for a wrong element. If you see, E doesn't even belongs to this tree. And that's the reason it's coming as empty. Let me quickly correct it. I'm going to take A. Now you can see it is giving us some data. This is a buffer. So let's print it properly. And as you can see, this is an array. So I'll try to loop over the array. I element position and we'll say dollar and it will be proof of I dot position and we'll say data dollar proof of I dot data and we have to pass it in that same function market tree buffer oops buffer dot x Okay, let me remove other console logs so that we are only printing this proof. Let me clear my screen. Okay, you can see zero element position right and this is the data. One element position is again right and this is the data. And at this point of time, let me print the tree as well simultaneously so that we can understand what this is. Okay, let me again clear my screen and print. Okay, now you can see I tried to generate it for A. And as you all know, A is 3AC double to 5. We just now observed while printing this. Okay, let me print it again so that it's very clear what is going on here. Okay, now first we'll be printing the tree. And then let me just print a colon this come on okay yeah a is 3ac double two five one six eight one cb you can see that this is a so once we try to create a proof for this leaf what all should we get if you remember from our diagram if we need to find this kth element in this set we need its neighbor we need the neighbor of its parent and we can generate this hash and we need the neighbor of this. So we need this and then again its parent's neighbor is all we need. So in this case, let me open up my diagram that I drew. Now we wanted to find it out for A. So what all do we need? We need its neighbor. That means we need B triple five three D E, which is the right of this element. What do you see here? You see right 
and then there is this b triple five three e d b triple five three d e which is b okay so this means that for a we got so sorry let me use another yeah so for a okay i'm so sorry somehow i'm messing it up give me a second okay so for a we need this element which we already got and then what else do we need we can generate this because now we have these two we will need this one also so this is on the right of the root and this is starts with 0 5 4 2 0 b i'm sorry and if you see here this also starts with 0 b 4 2 so we got these two hashes which we needed essentially and now we can pass it to our function which can verify here if you see in this uh, give me a second okay now here if you see to our tree we pass this proof we pass the leaf and we pass the root and it is actually going to verify whether we can with this proof and leaf can we whatever root that we generated does it match our own root and if that is true it is going to print true now in our case this verification will be done on chain on chain we will already have root and we will also use an open sapling library to verify it all we need to pass and supply to our smart contract will be proof and leaf so let's check that now i'm heading over to contracts wizard and i selected erc 721 mintable option and now i'm going to open it in remix okay we've got the function now first thing that we need to declare is our root variable so i'm hitting public bytes 32 public root this will pass it in our constructor we can also create a setter if in case in future we want to change the merkle root if we want to accommodate more people in the whitelist we can do that but right now i'll be passing this in the constructor i'll also create a mapping between address and boolean variable to store whether the public address has already been claimed or not that whitelist spot is claimed or not okay we have a safe main function and we'll also have another function is valid whitelist we'll pass in the address and we'll see if it's valid Now first thing is let's complete this constructor. We'll be passing in a root and we'll initialize it with okay. And then let's declare here require and I would say not of whitelist claimed message dot sender. Whitelist spot already claimed by this address, or we can say address is already claimed, which is also fine. This is also fine. One more thing that we would like to check would be that this is indeed a valid whitelist address. So, for that, we need to create a CASAC 256 dot encoded ebi dot encode packed message dot sender comma proof now we need to complete this function first so let's complete it before moving any further so this is going to take a leaf which we want to verify whether this belongs to this buckle tree or not and then we'll also accept a proof which is going to be a bytes 32 this is going to be an array as we saw we need multiple hashes to create the path to the root the proof and we will return public returns bool okay I'll complete it in a bit but first I need to complete a few other things over here one thing would be that we have to then set whitelist claimed equals true okay and this this should be api.encode packed 
and here we are actually going to call open zeppelin function so i'm going back to open zeppelin i'm going to the markle tree proof dot sole file of open zeppelin and this is what we are going to import so let me copy the url and let me paste it here first and now i'll just append it from here okay now we got the muckle proof and we will call muckle proof dot verify and we will need to pass in a proof a root and a leaf okay now let me show you this verify function in muckle proof verify okay you can see it takes in a proof it takes in a root and it takes in a leaf that we want to verify returns true if a leaf can be proved to be a part of merkle tree defined by the root for this a proof must be provided containing sibling hashes of the branch from the leaf to the root each pair of leaves and each pair of pre images are assumed to be true as sorry assumed to be sorted okay so one thing that we need to make sure is we are actually sorting while creating our merkle tree and for that we can actually pass another option to this let me show you what all options you can pass if i go to options you can see if set to true an odd node will be duplicated and combined to make pair to generate the layer hash i think this is what i meant when i said like in few implementation you can actually if you get odd number of leaves you can actually create duplicate of one node sorry create duplicate of one leaf and then you can always have a balanced tree So I think this is what you need to pass to do that, and this is what is important to us sort pairs. So we are going to pass this as true. So let me pass it as true. Okay, this is what we need to do because that is what this library will expect us to do. Okay, so we have imported the Open Zeppelin library. We have also written our Merkle proof dot verify. Okay, one thing that I want to do is I want to remove this only owner. from here so that we can actually anybody can mint it and not just the owner who deployed the smart contract hmm. now it looks good let's compile the contract and i can see there is some issue on line number 19th did you mean root okay we are not actually specifying that we need a root so let me add add it over here bytes 32 memory proof this proof we will pass it while we are trying to call this save mint function it looks good to me let me press compile storage or memory for construction pair but none was given line number 13 oh it should be bytes 32 so sorry i make it so sorry message dot sender now we can deploy this smart contract let's deploy this one and we will need to pass a root now this is where we are actually going to go ahead and create a merkle tree with all these addresses so let me show you i am actually running hard hat locally so i'm going to connect with it okay now you can see i'm getting a lot of addresses now i'll copy three addresses to illustrate my point now instead of these values i'll have I'll copy three addresses. So I copied first. Now I'm going to copy the second one. Now I'm going to copy the third one. Okay, and they all will be mapped to a PSAC two fifty six value, and then we'll generate the Merkle tree. And let's print this tree and see what we have got. And let me. comment out every other thing okay okay as you can see we have generated the tree and let me log the root this is the root but let me log it out okay you can see we got the root and we need to use it into our constructor when we are deploying so you need to append it with 0x for hexadecimal transact 
and yes it's deployed now we'll go to the save mint function and in two address we'll first do the happy path that we generated for three addresses i'm copy one of these we should be able to mint it so this is a two address and okay we should have actually selected auto increment so that we wouldn't have worried about this token id but okay let's see one is the token id and now here we need to pass the proof so let's generate the proof we are doing it for the third address okay for the third address we are trying to check whether it is there in the list which means this one so first we need to create is kakak 256 hash of this address and then const proof tree dot get proof of this leaf and then let's print the what is there in this proof okay looks good to me tree will be printed root will be printed and then we will be printing the proof okay fine okay zeroth element left data okay so we got only one hash this time now why is that the case this is the third element if you observe my last diagram that i made this is going to be this third element and what it essentially needs is only this hash correct so it needs only one hash and that's why only one hash is present in the proof okay now we are supposed to copy this proof and i'm gonna be pasting it into the remix editor and now I'm clicking transact. Okay, there is some error transaction reverted without a reason string. Okay, I have forgotten the return statement. So I'm going to add it. Okay, and we also add here not a, not a valid whitelist address. Okay, now I think we have to recompile it and redeploy it okay now we will deploy it once again my token we need to provide a root once again so let me copy it back don't forget to write 0x oh shit wait i'm not writing okay transact done let's safely mint it now address is the same address it's a part of whitelist it should be able to actually mint it out let's say token id is one we could have actually passed this yeah i have already talked about it leave it now let me grab the proof and provide it as an array transact and yes it has gone through now what if I want to transact it from an address which is not even part of this let's say this fourth one copy and I actually need to send an another proof for it but the point is that we are not going to get any proof because this is not going to belong to our list itself so the Merkle proof is going to be empty. Let me run it and show it to you. You can see that we didn't get anything let me just console log the proof so that you all can see. You can see proof is empty because this is not part of this list at all and one more thing that you might have not is, uh, noticed would have been that for the proof I'm actually only passing the leaf and I'm not passing any index whatsoever so in that case I told you like it needs the index of the element in the list to be able to figure out how many of the hashes it needs how to figure out which are the neighbors so the thing is this library automatically does that if you go to the implementation of this get proof hmm this is the get proof function and if you see what it does is just look at it if index has not been provided that means this is going to be true what it does is it traverses over all the leaves and it tries to find out its index and once it gets it it actually tries to build the proof okay now yeah you might argue this is order of n operation and yes indeed it is so if you have the index available 
please provide it okay cool now such that we are getting empty proof no problem we'll just try to use the older proof and we'll try to see what happens with this one we should not be able to transact that's it but let's see what happens if i'm gonna say transact and let me say send transaction and what are we saying not a valid whitelist address correct let me pick any other address as well let me click uh, select this fifth one and if i try to transact with this i should get this error anyway not a valid whitelist address yes folks so that is it how you can find out with the help of merkle trees efficiently whether a particular address belongs to a set of addresses or not so hope you all like this video if you did please give a like to this video subscribe to my channel and i'll catch you in the next video bye bye